OK, um, welcome to our uh, second lab. So in this lab, we will see that how we can clean the data uh, by using the Tableau Prep Builder. So Tableau Prep Builder is a pretty new uh, tool that in Tableau that can help us clean the data and also process the data. So first, let's download the data that we are going to use. So that is an Excel file um, containing the house price and from Zillow. So actually, those are the original data that I downloaded from Zillow uh, several years ago. So let's let download the data set. And once that has been downloaded, <coughs> let's also uh, go to our uh, OneDrive folder. So let's make sure that we save everything in a OneDrive. So OneDrive folder. Uh, so here, let's call it uh, Lab2. And we can drag the data from the download, downloads folder into the OneDrive folder. All right, next, let's launch the Tableau Prep Builder. So, and I'm using Tableau Prep Builder 2020.4 version. All right, uh, so here you can see our previous uh, data flows that uh, we have. Uh, so now let's say we want to connect to our data. And because our data is an Excel file, so let's choose uh, Excel. And let's go to our uh, OneDrive folder. So we're going to use this house price Excel file. OK, uh, so now you can see the data has been loaded. And I don't think the data interpreter will help uh, because the data is already uh, in the pretty nice uh, structure. But it doesn't hurt that if you check the uh, data interpreter. Uh, to, to preview the data, so let's add a cleaning step, a step. OK, so here we can see we have all the data, all the columns. And the first is ID. So normally, I would use that ID treat as a string because ID should be categorical information. And price is also important, so we want to keep price and also number of bedrooms and also bathrooms. However, we see that we have a lot of non values. Okay, and in Tableau Prep, so if you click the non values, and you can see that how those values distri distributed in other um, columns, you can see uh, if the record has non values in bedroom, it is also highly likely that they have non values in the bathrooms. OK, and the most of the land or lot, they have non values for bedroom and also bathroom, which actually uh, makes sense because they are not a house yet. So let's exclude those uh, non values. So let's right click and exclude. OK, uh, you can see we still have a few bunch of non values. So if you like, you can continue, click those non values and you can see uh, how those are uh, distributed across the other um, columns. So if you like, you can also continue exclude those non values. OK, uh, let's move on. So here, let's see that we don't want the air conditions. So let's click that one and we don't want air conditions state. Uh, so let's remove that one. And for status, so we have three types for sale, for sale by owner, and also pending. And actually, for sale and also for sale by owner, they are they should belong to the same status. They should always belong to for sale. So let's try to group those two values. So let's click this uh, menu icon and let's choose group. Let's see, we want group based on the pronunciation. So let's see. OK, and now you can see for sale and also for sale by owners has been grouped together. OK, which is nice. And let's hit down. OK, so let's move on. So we don't need parking. Uh, we don't need basement. We don't need lawn, etc. until, let's see, lot size. So we don't need all the columns until um, lot size. So we hit shift key and click all those columns. 
So we selected all those columns and let's say remove. All right. Uh, so now we are looking at um, the lot size. Okay, so first we have some non lot size. So let's also remove that one. And also, if you look at the lot size, you can see we have a lot of values that within the zero range. And we also have a lot of values that is above 3000, 6000, or 9000. Okay, uh, so that is pretty interesting. And if you look at the lot size here, if you uncheck the selection, you can see we have some values that is very big and we also have some values that is less than one. OK, so here that is that is a problem that I guess that is because some people they are using the acres and some people they are using square foot because people are using type different unit. So that's why that here we have different values. OK, so to resolve that problem, let's create a new field in this data set. So let's click and also say let's create a new calculated field. OK, so click calculated field and let's use a customer calculation. And let's call it clean lot size. So here, let's say we want to make a judgment. We say that if the lot size is smaller than 10, we will then return the value, which is the lot size times 43560. Else, we will return the lot size. OK, and let's see end. OK, so this is a very simple uh, if else statement. So that means if the lot size is smaller than 10, then we assume that that was in acres. So we convert that way into square foot. So that is this acres times this number. So that will convert square foot into acre, uh, convert acre into square foot. If that is greater than 10, we will keep the original value. OK, uh, so let's apply it and save it. And let's see our clean lot size. OK, so that's here. OK, and now that looks like pretty much pretty much better. OK, so let's keep that one. Um, that also means that we should remove the lot size. For the year of being built, so that is the year that has been built. So if you like, you can also exclude those non values. And let's also change that one into date format. Uh, MLS ID, so we don't need that one. And for the zip, zip code, again, let's exclude those non values. And also for zip code, we do have a geographic rules that is zip code. So that means we can create maps later. So let's convert that one into zip code. All right, and we don't need the floor, we don't need the roof, and we don't need those stuff. So let's uh, move on. So we, we don't need a floor roof uh, until we reach the the area. So let's remove all those selected stuff. All right, so now we have the area and we still have the non values for area. So let's ex exclude that one as well. Uh, okay, so here let's see, we, we know that we have the house price and we also have the size of the house. But we know that um, there is a very important uh, a measurement of the house value that is unit price. OK, so let's create a new field. Let's call it unit price. So let's see here, create a calculated field. So let's call it unit price. So that is the value of the price 
okay so the value of the price columns divided by the value of the area columns so let's apply and save okay and now we have this unit price field okay so that's very nice and we can now uh, remove all the others so until here so let's remove those stuff okay so that's a lot of data cleaning process so if you check this uh, uh, the changes to the histories you can see that we have 18 uh, different operators and uh, if you think that you did something wrong you can always go back and also you can undo those uh, changes all right so now we are done with the data cleaning we can export the data so uh, so here let's say we add one more step let's say we want export the data and here let's say we save our result so let's go to our OneDrive folder okay lab 2 and let's call it uh, house price okay so now we are going to export data into this hyper format so that is a uh, optimized uh, data format in tableau so let's accept that okay so now we can run this flow so we can write here or we can write here and now that's done uh, let's also save this uh, the process so let's save this one uh, that is a flow file let's save that one to our OneDrive folder as well okay so I will call it lab 2 save it uh, so now if we go to our uh, OneDrive folder we have the house price Excel file so that is original data uh, we have the hyper file so that is the tableau extract so that means that is a cleaned data um, but in the tableau extract format so in the hyper format we also have this flow file tableau flow file so this one does not contain the data so it only contains the data cleaning process so if you want to apply the similar process the same process for the other similar data set you can bring the, the other data set into this flow uh, file and also you can clean the data in the same way all right so now we have the clean data so let's double click this hyper file uh, so that will bring the tableau desktop okay and so here you can see we have this very nice clean data set and let's create our sheet okay so let's also save the uh, the workbook so let's save the workbook to our uh, lab 2 folder OneDrive folder as well so now we can see we have IDs status zip code year the house being built house type etc we have the area number bathroom bedroom uh, the cleaned lot size price unit price etc all right uh, we also have the latitude the longitude those are generated based on this zip code okay so let's say let's drag the house type okay so let's drag the house type to the rows and let's drag the number of the data uh, to the column so we can see that uh, how many house type we have uh, so here we can see the uh, we have a lot of single family home and we have a few condos we have some townhouse and we have the land a lot all right so that is our first uh, sheet so let's give it a title house in different types okay uh, you can customize your own title so okay and next let's see that we want to see the uh, the house price av average unit price per zip code so let's click the zip code and if you go to show me now you can see we can create a map so let's check this map okay so now we can see because the data are collected in Harrisonburg so you can see now we have those dots in Harrisonburg 
Uh, so if you are interested, you can change this base map. Let's say we want to change that one into streets. OK, so now you can see they are in Harrisonburg. And now let's say we drag the unit price into the size. OK, so you can see that we have the so the different size indicated the size of unit price. However, let's want let's say we want to see the average, not the sum. So let's convert that um, the sum into average. OK, and we can see those are some places that have higher average unit price. OK, uh, so that's a pretty nice. And also we have a legend. OK. And for this one, we see average unit price. All right. Uh, for the last one, let's say we want to see that the trend of the unit price. Let's say select unit price, hit control key, and also year the house being built. And let's use the recommended chart that is a line chart. OK, so now we can see the price that's built in different years. However, we are looking at the sum the, of the unit price. So let's change that to, to average. OK, so now we can see uh, we have uh, uh, the unit price at a pretty higher in that year. So I guess that probably because uh, 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 that probably adjusts a few uh, records that those are outliers. OK, and also we have the unit price that in the recent years. OK, and so if you're interested, we can also make a forecast. So if we go to analytics and we can drag the forecast here. And however, in this case, we don't have any forecast. And the reason is because uh, we have very sparse data that in the previous years. So we have, you can see we have one that in 2018, in, in um, 04, we have one that in 18, 2020. Okay, so we have very sparse data in the previous years, but we do have a lot of data that in the recent years. So to do that, to fill out the records in the past years, we can go to our data source. And let's say we want to add a filter. Okay, and let's say we want to use a built-in. And we use uh, the relative date, which will work. And let's say we want the last 10 years. Okay. So let's say we want the last 10 years. So this filter will apply to this entire data set. That will change all, all the visualizations that we created. So that is a different filter that we used here. So the filter that we used in this mark will only change the existing visualizations. The filter applied to the data source will, will impact all the visualizations, Okay, all the sheets. OK, so now you can see we have a, we do have a, a forecast and you can actually. I think you can add it to this forecast. So let's see uh, for the future exists exactly how many years and you can choose the different models. OK, etc. All right. And let's see that uh, that is a price over years. OK, and I just give some random title here. All right, so now we have those three sheets. Let's combine all those sheets into a dashboard. OK, uh, so let's see. I want to put a map here. Uh, I want to put uh, the bar chart here and also a line chart here. OK, as a best practice, uh, I want to put uh, the legend together with a map and this legend together with this line chart. Okay. Uh, you can also uh, adjust uh, the view. So for example, this one, I want the entire view. This one also is already the entire view. Uh, you can also adjust the size of the dashboard. So for example, I choose automatic. OK, and now this one looks pretty nice. All right. 
And I also want to enable the filter on this sheet so that, for example, if I want to just look at the single family home, and you can see the, the house price, unit price is actually increasing. And we can see the areas that where the unit price of the single family home are higher. And now if I look at condo, there's no forecast because we don't have enough data set. And that's similar from the townhouse and also land or lot. Okay, and if you want, you can also add a title for this dashboard. So let's just call it Lab 2. Okay, which actually is not a great title. Okay, so that is the entire process. So uh, let's save it and let's also export our dashboard. So export image. Uh, let's also save that one to our uh, OneDrive folder. Okay, so this is lab two. Okay, so now if we go to our OneDrive folder, uh, so now we can close those files. Okay, so what we did today was that we collect, we downloaded the raw data, which is Excel file that has a lot of issues. We clean the data in the Tableau prep. So we exported the clean the data tab in this hyper format. And next, we we load the cleaned data into Tableau desktop, and we created this very nice dashboard. 